Hello. Today we're going to build one of these water sluiceway uh, uh, arches, and we're going to build it in such a way that we can make it vary over the course of the level, rather than having the same arch over and over and over. One of the keys to ruins, in my opinion, is that the bricks are shattered in different ways in different places, so we want to make this look quite different as we progress through the level. But the arches should be quite heavy and quite solid. So we're going to be using this kind of brickwork. And now, if you were here with me for the past two episodes, you know that this is the kind of brickwork that I've kind of grown enamored with. So let's examine it. The first thing you might notice is that this arch here is an illusion. These edges are not the edges of the bricks. They are just carved out. The bricks actually extend all the way across. So this is a brick, and then it comes down. This is a brick, and then it comes down. And that gives it a lot of horizontal grip which means that you can use weight from above to actually keep these intact, which is why there are still bricks stacked on top of it. It actually strengthens it to have bricks stacked on top of it. Down here is a smaller version, and you can see it's the same thing. Brick comes across, then goes down. Brick comes across, then goes down. Uh, if we take a closer look here, at, on the large one, we can see that the bricks have a maximum size that's being exceeded. So as the bricks have to move to the left, the actual right-hand edge also has to move to the left because the brick has a certain maximum width based on the quarry and the maximum lift. Uh, in case you're wondering, this is huge. That's the size of a person. So these are very, very sizable bricks, and lifting them would have been quite a significant feat. So having a maximum size is quite understandable. On the smaller archway, you can see that the maximum size doesn't apply and that these bricks uh, more or less go out to the same width, uh, leaving aside whatever damage we have on the far side. We're going to be going ahead with this kind of construction. Uh, we don't need this super, super tall stuff yet. We're going to build that later. So this is a pretty simple construction uh, where we're going to have a stack of bricks. And I know that this has some variations down here as to the kinds of bricks used and so on and so forth. We're not going to do that. We're just going to have stacks of bricks that then go across a very, very straightforward arch. OK? But it is going to be substantially thicker than the arch uh, in the example here. So how do we go about building that? Well, we're going to build each brick individually. And then when we put it in the game world, we're actually going to uh, adjust all of those bricks randomly, save it as a prefab, uh, and then we'll have a whole bunch of different meshes. But they'll all be a single mesh. The bricks aren't going to remain different, separate bricks for very long. The downside of that is we will end up with a bunch of different custom meshes, which will slightly increase the load on the computer, uh, especially the download sizes and stuff like that. But meshes are actually not a big deal. Uh, the big deals are textures and render calls, and both of those are going to be unaffected by our little scheme. So it should all work out. Let's go over into Blender and take a look. Here is an empty screen. Oh, and I have an empty piece there. Let's go ahead and add ourselves a brick. Where is our brick? It's nowhere near where we need it to be. Shift C to put it in the middle. And now let's add our brick. So our character is one by one by one. Well, our character is one unit tall, one meter tall, if you'd like. Uh, although it, in the world, it's not meters, obviously. So our character is about the same height as this brick, meaning this brick is much too tall. So let's shorten the brick down to about half. That way, the brick is quite large, um, but not so large that it's unbelievable. Now, in terms of width of this brick, uh, if this is the width of the brick, then that means that our arch is going to be about three times that wide. So if we were to drag this brick to the left here, uh, I'm going to actually do it in uh, object mode so that I can uh, keep all of the objects in the right places here. Uh, so if I were to adjust this, uh, I can sort of imagine that there would be another brick over here. I could mirror it if I want to, but that's, this is not something that's actually going to be mirrored. Um, the mirroring is just for my own, um, uh, oh, I can't mirror it because the, the x-axis is in the wrong place. That's fine, though. Uh, it's, this, this brick has a mirror image over here. So that's the width that we're looking at. And for thickness, that might be a little bit too thick, but it's actually not too bad. So let's go ahead and leave it this size. So this brick should feel really big and heavy, but it should feel reasonable. Now, when we think about what the uh, actual um, uh, image looked like, we can go back here. We can see that these bricks are, oh, let's just spin all over the place. Thanks, mouse. We can see that these bricks have some detail work. These bricks down at the bottom, they have a wide outside uh, with some cut inside and then a slight uh, uh, inner area where the actual arch comes to a head. So let's go ahead and duplicate that. 
which we can do by putting in, oh, let's go inside, put in some cuts. So if we think about that, this should be about the right spot for it to start to get smaller, um, about halfway in. And so we're going to want to make everything on this side quite a bit smaller, but we don't want to make it too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and try it out, shall we? If we press E and then shrink it, you can see what we're doing. So shrink on the y-axis, uh, maybe like this. Now we have this nasty little area here where uh, there is going to be a face war. So we want to be uh, aware of that and try and avoid any kind of damage like that. So let's undo all of that. And instead what we're going to do is we're going to put in some cuts. And these cuts we will expand like this. And then what we can do is we can delete these verts. And this will avoid that, that situation where we have a face that is zero high and zero wide. There we are. But how do we make the inside here appear to be uh, the same as in the image? Well, if we look at the image, thanks, mouse, uh, what we see here is that we have a taper towards the uh, center of the arch. And it's actually a decorated taper with a scooped shape. So let's go ahead and see if we can duplicate that. We're going to want to have something like this, and then we can scale these up on the y-axis like so. And in order to scoop this shape, we have a lot of options. Um, but for now, I think the easiest option is to just move these back and then scale Y in like so. But you can see that that actually screws up because the face of the quad is a little bit unusual. To fix that, we're going to go ahead and put in some cuts like this, like this, like this and like this. Come on. There we go. So you can see that that is slightly scooped. It's scooped enough for our purposes and it no longer has any of the weird damage that we had. Um, that's more or less correct. And then here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in that uh, uh, that look that had, it, it kind of had slots taken out of it. We have some options as to how we want to build the slots. One of the options is to uh, create lots and lots of loops all around, but I'd like to keep the number of verts all over this to, to a minimum. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to extrude and then scale down. And then we're going to create some really awkward faces. Now this is fine because we're never going to animate these bricks, so awkward faces aren't too bad. As long as they don't screw up your UV map, you should be fine. Um, but what you can do is you can actually just hit subdivide, say however many times you'd like, uh, the problem with subdivide is that it, we want it actually to be subdivided into an odd number of faces and we're getting an even number. So let's go ahead and see whether or not we can do a little bit better. What we're going to do is we're going to hit R and you can see how it expands out too far. That's too much. So let's go ahead and just cut it. Cut, cut. Oh, but that's not in the middle at all. It's like off in the middle. It's off. It's screwy. So we hold down control when we are cutting and they cut in the middle. And then we can press K again, cut in the middle. Press K again and cut in the middle. Uh, now, if you are like me, you will quickly realize that this is not quite right. We'd like to have uh, a number of divots that works out in our favor. You know what? This will work. Because all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the divot at the very top and at the very bottom. Like this. If we press E, we bring it in. And that is that. If we switch over to face mode and then scale down, we can scale these faces without moving them towards each other too much. Uh, I guess they still move towards each other, don't they? Oh, there we are. It was just, uh, it was in a different central mode. So now, when we scale these faces down, they don't move towards each other at all. So if we scale x 0.9, mm, scale x, oh, scale y 0.9, and then scale z 0.9, uh, point, scale z 0.6, there we go. That'll give us a kind of divoted look. So this is our brick. And uh, you might be wondering, well, what if we want to bevel the edges? Well, we could do that if we add in the bevels. Let's go ahead and take a look here. You can see that we have 49 faces, 96 tries, 50 verts. The values we want to keep track of are verts and tries. They'll always be related. Uh, so if we add in our bevel, you can see that that jumps. 
we have four times as many verts and almost four times as many tries. So if we wanted to bevel, we would want to be more careful about what surfaces we bevel because we don't want to have every single one of these arches take up thousands and thousands of faces. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave it nice and sharp. And the reason for that is because I can always add in normal map based uh, screwery later. And I can make some normal map based stuff for making these look more like bricks. Let's go ahead and UV map this. Uh, and to UV map it, we're just going to uh, select all of the lines we would like to select, which is uh, these. And then we'll just deselect the ones in the middle here. Switch over to line edit, and you can deselect the individual lines that you don't want. Uh, like so. That was annoying. There we are. So now we've got this. So we're going to cut. We're going to uh, mark the seam, and then we're going to do the same down down here. So just you can select it all. Let's uh, let's not select that annoying piece. There we are. Select it all. And then just uh, switch over to vert mode. Deselect these guys. Switch over to line mode, deselect these guys, mark the face. And we want to select this, it's like this, mark the face. We'll want to make these and these, and mark the face. Uh, yep, yeah, that looks decent. And let's go ahead and mark here, here here and here. So what we're doing is we're chopping this up into discrete pieces and the reason we're doing that is because that'll let us UV map it automatically without having to do each face individually. So if we switch over, we create a new window on the right here and we switch over to UV editor, we select everything and we unwrap it. You can see that that produces a nice kind of unwrapped system. And we can adjust that however we, however we would like um, but for now I think we'll leave it as is. So let's right click join, hide that away. We'll just save this as uh, water sluice 1 and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to save it again but this time we're going to increment the save like so. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to duplicate this brick. Now as you might know uh, shift D duplicates but control shift D, no it's not control shift D, what is it? Alt D? Alt D. Alt D duplicates with a link so if we go in here, you can see how these are being edited at the same time. So Alt-D is a great way to make it so that later on, if we need to change the UV map or something, they all change at the same time. The problem is that's not going to work for the arch, because each one of the arch bricks is unique. Still, for now it'll work fine. So let's go ahead and just Alt-D. Uh, Alt-D. Alt-D. D. Now this is more or less where the arch should start to arch inward. Shoop. Um, but I think that these bricks are all too far to the left. So let's move them right. There we go. And now what we can do is we can Alt D to duplicate all of them. And then we can rotate Z 180. And we can Control drag. And there we are. So now we have the beginnings of our archway. Shall we save this and see what it looks like here in Unity? I'll give you a hint. Terrible. So as you can see, we've got some serious annoying issues with it. Well, first off, let's go ahead and put a, a uh, material on it so it doesn't look totally awful. How about rock? You can see that we have to do this for each individual one. That sounds like a lot of dragging and dropping. Instead, what we're going to do is just expand it, select all of them, and drop the rock in. There we go. Uh, we're also going to want to make it so that that isn't so smooth. It's it's all smooth, and that's no good. So let's uh, change it to calculate and hit apply. There we are. That's a little bit better, but you notice that these edges are very, very crisp. They're super crisp. Um, so what we can do is we can go back in and we can try and edit the brick to have a beveled edge on the top or the bottom or both. Um, but we want to be very, very careful not to screw it up. So if I were to put R here, uh, you can see how it does not cross across the face, and that's because we screwed up the face. So we're going to need to move this like so, and then we're going to need to actually manually cut across the face here. And I'm holding down Control to get the center cut. 
There we are. So now you can select the top of this object, and that is a little bit difficult to see due to the number of bricks involved in our duplication efforts. Um, just be patient and don't accidentally select the wrong line. There we go. So I've just selected the top, and what I can do is I can just scale it down. Oh, switch over to vert mode and then scale it down slightly. That'll do. So you might have noticed that I didn't put one at the bottom, only at the top. Uh, you can do the bottom too if you'd like. I want to keep the number of faces to a minimum though, so I'm going to do just that. And if we go back over into Unity, we'll probably see that that bevel looks awkward. Um, you can see how it looks really forced and stretched. Uh, so if you wanted to fix that up, all we have to do is go back into Blender, and once again, we want to re-UV map everything. Let's take a look at the UV map, and uh, we'll just unwrap, unwrap, there we are. And you can see that now the layout is quite different, which is fine. We're not attached to any particular UV map layout yet. Go back into Blend, I'd go back into Unity here, ah, there we are. And once again, these bricks look uh, quite quite aggressive. Um, but now at least they can be differentiated by the fact that they have seams. Now, if you're thinking, that's way too tight, that brickwork's way too tight. Uh, if we look back at the image, that's how tight the brickwork is when it's in good condition. It's actually got mortar, I think. So uh, it's not way too tight. What we're going to do is we're going to end up skewing these bricks kind of pseudo-randomly, uh, like, you know, something like this. So um, it's, not, it's not a big deal if the bricks seem to line up too tightly when they're all in the right spot, because they're not all going to be in the right spot. But that said, we still have an arch to make. Let's go ahead and uh, hit play here and make sure we can fit through the middle. So the idea is that it should be a really tight fit, and it is. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to build the arch over the top of our system. So how do we build the arch? Well, what we need to do is we need to select one of these guys here, like this guy here, and we need to hit Shift-D. Shift-D will would, would create a duplicate, but the duplicate won't be um, linked to the original anymore. See? And that means that we may have to recreate this arch several times. So, uh, you know, be that, you know, keep that in mind when you're, when you're building this. Uh, you may need to rebuild this if you change any of the underlying bricks because these bricks won't change when you do so. So what sort of arch are we looking to get here? Well, we're just going to go ahead and select the face of this guy. Uh, I guess I have to hit Z to make it selectable. There we are. And we're going to bring it over into where we think this arch is going to be, which is probably going to be in uh, here and then down like this. And we can rotate it like so. And we'll just kind of wing it. So if we take a look at how it is in our um, favorite pictures, come on, eh, there we are. Uh, what we see is that the the thing turns down quite severely, but we have a very narrow arch. Uh, we don't have the the loose arch that we we, we see in these images. We have a super narrow arch like these. So our capstone isn't going to look the same. Our capstone is going to be a wedge, and that is just fine. So that means that when we look at our editor, we don't need much space here. And what we would really like to have is something like this, which is fine. But it does mean that this area here has to be brought in line. And you can see where we're running into a problem already, where the cuts along the side don't extend across the top. So if we wanted to make that work out, we could do so by adding in some cuts. Uh, we can just uh, put a control R, we'll add a cut here, and then we can connect with a knife. But we're doing this at the wrong time. Let's back off. There we are. We should really be doing it here, because this is when our uh, brick is at its least damaged. So, like so, and then again on the bottom. Be careful when cutting and having invisibility on because you can accidentally cut things on the far side, uh, so just be aware. There we go. So now our brick has a joint, and we can make that joint do whatever we need it to, but this brick is no longer valid, because that is from the old brick standard, like I said. Shift D, bring it down. Now we've got two bricks. Let's go ahead and move our brick into place. 
So if we bring it out and then we bring it down, you can see that the joint no longer looks nearly as awkward or forced. If we rotate this, and then we can bring it back, and basically we want about that much of a wedge. Now this is a little bit uh, extreme, so let's move this. Uh, is that? Try that again. I guess that's two here. Let's move this up and in. Just squeezing this face down. You know what a better way to do that would be? Select it all and then scale Z. There we go. So now that we've created this uh, downward angle, we're going to go and think about uh, how to do the same here. Now you notice this is kind of an undecorated arch and that is fine for the moment. We're going to go ahead and deal with that in the future. But basically we want to um, bring this into alignment. And you can see that that's much too much rotation. But we're doing this the wrong way again. So what we actually, all we need to do is rotate the top. We're going to hit Alt period and what that'll do is it'll make the last vert we select our center of rotation. And that way we can rotate without having to worry about uh, skewing where the bottom is. And then we can just uh, do the same thing, try that again, scale Z. We can bring this ad down until it is in roughly the right spot. Rotate it a little bit. There we go. And there we go. We have ourselves two bricks. But they don't look quite right. And that's because the bricks in our uh, demonstration actually have decoration here. I'm not going to put that in. Uh, I might put that in later, but for now I'm going to leave it like this. And instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these guys and I'm going to go Alt D to duplicate them with a linked object, rotate them, uh, rotate them around the Z axis 180 degrees and move them over here. And the last step we need to take is we need to add in a wedge block. Well, a wedge block isn't too bad. What we're going to do is just uh, create one off of this top face. So if we do Shift D to duplicate, and then we can do P to punch out the selection, hit Tab, and we should have a selection here. Now, if you're wondering what happened to the parent, to, uh, what happened to the other side, uh, it doesn't. Um, it, it only pops out of one of them and it doesn't remain in the other one. So you don't have to worry about having accidentally screwed it up because they'll always remain linked. There we are. So let's go ahead and add in a mirror modifier to this guy. But we do need to make sure that he is at the right location because if we mirror modifier, uh, let's try that again, if we mirror modifier around him now you can see that there's basically no no difference. We can't really see what's going on. There's no Oh, there it is. It's in the wrong spot. It's all screwy. So we're going to hit uh, Alt-A apparently animates. Let's not do that. Um, Alt-A, stop animation. There we are. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Control-A. Yeah, there it is. We're going to apply the location, and that will make it so that this object is actually in the right spot. Um, but we don't have our mirror modifier anymore, so mirror, mirror on the wall. There we are. See? So apply clipping, and that's important because what we're going to do is we're just going to extend and then hit X and then extend in, like so. Very straightforward. Uh, now you can add in some decorations here if you'd like. Uh, just extrude and then shrink. Uh, Alt, control period, shrink. Uh, and then we actually have clipping on, so let's go ahead and turn clipping off and shrink, and that way we can get this separately on both sides of the object and then extrude in. And you can duplicate that on the other side or if you're lazy like I am you can delete the other side and just make it mirror on both sides like this. And then we hit apply. The problem with this is that no UV map or no significant UV map. See? Just kind of something awkward. So we do have to build a UV map for it. Uh, fortunately, that's pretty easy. We're just going to select around the top here and mark it. And then we're going to uh, select around the bottom here and mark it. And then we'll change over to line select and slice each of our edges. 
market. There we go. Looks decent. Save it. And let's go into our Unity file. Now that's taken us half an hour to model our arch. Ooh. And we need to once again put our material back in. So where's our rock? Rock will not be the long term material, in case you're wondering. There you go. Uh, and also later on we'll be modifying the UV elements of these meshes. We'll probably do it programmatically uh, to introduce some nice um, nice texturing here. So now if we hit play we can see that this arch is uh, more or less, well we can walk through it obviously at the moment, is more or less the right size. It doesn't have anything on top of it and it kind of seems to end abruptly. Um, one of the issues with that is that the capstone is quite a bit smaller than the other bricks. We can adjust that a little bit in the near future here. But there is going to be a giant thing on top of these. So we don't need the tops to be very large because they just are supportive. Let's go back into Blender. And let's just adjust the uh, tops here by scale uh, Ying like this. Mm. Let's go ahead and turn on our proportional editing. Perfect. That's more or less right. So, what is our next step? Well, you know, we are at the end of this episode because we have a limited amount of time per episode. Uh, in the next episode, what we'll do is we will make it so that these vary and then stitch themselves together into one mesh. Uh, so look forward to that, and I'm sorry that this was just a modeling exercise.